All right, hello and welcome back. Um, I'm Hero. In this video, we're going to be talking about single combat versus sword and shield. Um, I'm splitting uh, single combat into two videos, sword and shield and great weapon, because they really are very different things. Um, first thing I want to talk about is weapon length. Um, a lot of fighters like to use a six foot blade against sword and shield, and I really feel like that is too long because it's difficult to maneuver this weapon in close range compared to this one. Um, for me personally, um, so this one's 5'4", this one's 4'8", um, basically anything less than this, or equal to or less than this, works really well for me. Um, longer than this, it just gets too difficult to maneuver the weapon in close range. Less than 4'6", or so, is um, probably too short because you lose any reach advantage uh, versus sword shield. Um, if you're using a really short two-handed weapon, like, I don't know, a 40-inch axe or something like that, you really have to, it, it's a completely different style of fighting. You really have to get up close in your opponent's face, and that's not oh, how hi. I fight at all. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. <laughs> um, so, using range and measure against an opponent, Number one, you want to make sure, so again, I'm going to reiterate that range means can I hit my opponent. Measure means can my opponent hit me. Um, when you're fighting great weapon against sword and shield, unless your opponent um, is freakishly tall with long arms, oh, like your man. Slender Man, <laughs> no, like Duke Conrad from Von Crixen or something like that, then most likely I can hit my opponent and they cannot hit me back. That said, you don't want to hang out at the edge of measure because a fast opponent can take a quick, quick step forward and snipe you. Um, so that's why I get used to moving, when I'm doing pell work, I get used to moving in and out of range instead of just standing in range and throwing shots. Uh, try to engage the opponent on your terms. Um, you don't have to, well, so when the opponent moves to engage, you don't have to accept that engagement if it, you don't want to. Um, and we'll discuss that a little bit more as we go over some close-in stuff later in the, in the video. Distance is your best defense, so pay attention to range and measure, um, so you can use that to the, your advantage. That said, um, you need to pay attention to your surroundings so you don't get backed against the edge of the list. All right, so I've got Fiona assisting me with her shield that is not strapped properly, so we're just going to go with it. Um, so how do we get over the edge of the opponent's shield? When you're fighting great weapon against sword and shield, usually that's your biggest concern, is getting around the opponent's big defensive item. Um, so a few things to do that. So first one is high angle pop thrust. Now the normal, normal pop thrust will often work. But if the normal pop thrust is not working, then use the high angle version. And once again, I want to reiterate that with the high angle version, you want to focus more on just lifting your, the back hand um, rather than flicking it forward. Okay, so now I've got the shield tied to my uh, pel. Um, so first one we went over was the high angle pop thrust. Next one is the high angle onside head or flat snap. Um, and so that's really good for getting over the top edge of the shield. If you throw this from high stance, Duke Tamiki calls it the uh, ice cream scoop. And even though it comes in at an angle, it still hits perpendicular uh, to the opponent's helm and can sometimes let you power through their guard. The Next minute. one is the Zverkow. Sverkow is my favorite. We're going to be talking about that a lot. <laughs> um, and so that, that hits, again, at a, a high angle, but it also hits slightly farther back on the opponent's helm. So it hits more back here instead of right here. Um, and so that's really good for getting over shields. Um, hand me the one-handed sword. So um, a lot of sword and shield fighters when they're fighting against great weapon, will stick their sword out like this or like this, 
So when a uh, sword and shield fighter puts their weapon out like this, they usually try to maintain contact with your weapon. Um, and a few reasons they're doing that. Um, they're not trying to control your weapon because they don't have the leverage to do so. What they're trying to do is um, feel your weapon because sometimes the body can react to tactile senses, or tactile sensations faster than visual stimulus. Um, so if, if I'm, you know, we're in a bind situation basically and Fiona moves her weapon, I might be able to feel that sooner than I see it. Yeah. Um, so, that's, so that's one reason. Another reason, go ahead and get in your guard again. Another reason is just to be better about acting. Um, so often, um, you want to try to, the sword and shield fighter will try to block into their hand or their, their basket hilt um, because that has a better um, chance of blocking successfully than if they blocked with their tip. So as a great weapon fighter, how do you counter that when they stick their weapon out? So um, a few ways is with a counter uh, slap, circular slap. So if I um, slap it this way and then attack, um, that, that will sometimes work. Um, now even though I've knocked her weapon out of the way, she still has her shield so she can still block that second shot. So just keep that in mind. Um, another option is using a driving thrust. So from here, instead of thrusting with my arms, I want to thrust with my body because that makes it harder for the opponent to deflect my shot. Um, and then last one is lever back edge offside head. So go ahead and hold your weapon out. So if I push her weapon away like this, I'm maintaining contact with her weapon so that, so that she can't easily hit me back. And then once I'm to this position, then it's easy to use a back edge shot like that. Now, if the opponent goes with a hanging tip instead of tip up like this, the hanging tip is a little bit harder for the great weapons fighter to deal with, but it's still not that bad. And again, just a reminder that even if you get past their weapon, they still have their shields to protect them. So, all right. Um, so the next thing I want to go over is close in stuff. So close range. All right. Um, so close range stuff. Um, number one is my favorite shot, the Tsurikau, or back edge onside head, um, because even if I'm super close range, I can still throw that shot really easily. Um, this is also why I prefer to have longer blades on my glaives, because that makes it easier to do close in stuff like this um, without hitting, so I, I'm less likely to hit the opponent with the haft of my weapon. Um, if you're using a great sword, then of course you've got your know, blade all the way down to here or so, so the, uh, that's not as big of an issue. You can also do a high angle onside head or flat snap, but it's not as easy as a terracow. I can also step back as I'm throwing it, and that gets me farther away from my opponent's sword, which is over here, um, and so that's really nice. The, you can also do a uh, reverse spare cow, but again, you have to be careful with that one because if I try to do that here, then I'm exposing my back to my opponent and they're going to kill me. So that means I need to get around the opponent's weapon to here in order to use that reverse spare cow. Counter cut to back edge offside head, that's a really good one. So if I'm stuck in close with my opponent um, and they throw a wrap shot or whatever, if I you know, cut down into their weapon or their arm, that's going to stop the shot and also let me counterattack right here. Um, hand switch block to offside head. We already went over that one in previous video. So switching hands and then attacking there. If the opponent charges me, um, then you want to use pivot steps to get off the line. Um, Duke Mark recommends doing combination uh, combination steps. So if I do like uh, one or two passing steps and then a pivot step, that makes it harder for the opponent to react uh, to me changing direction. To avoid getting backed into the edge of the list, especially with smaller list fields, um, try stepping forward at an angle either side rather than backing up. 
if, uh, if my opponent is pushing against me and I step to their shield side, then I can pivot off of that as they move past me. Um, and I'm probably going to throw a shot like it's fair cow or something as they move past. Um, conversely, if you step forward this direction, then that lets you do like the lever back edge offside head or pivot around into a reverse swear cow. Duke Mark has a really good video covering all this stuff, and I'll link that video. Um, so other random thoughts. Um, instead of facing my opponent straight on, I will face slightly towards their shield side shoulder, um, because again, that's where the thread is coming from. It makes it easier for me to respond to that. If you have left foot forward and they throw at that leg, it's really easy to just void and counterattack. Don't try to beat your opponent in a speed game, even though you have two hand on, hands on the weapon, which gives you more uh, leverage, it doesn't give you more speed. And so your, uh, your sword and shield opponent with a one-handed sword can probably swing faster than you. So don't try to beat them in a speed game. Last thing I want to mention is wrap shots. Um, wrap shots basically look like this. Throw this way, but then move my bottom hand underneath my top arm, just like if I was throwing an offside shot. So wrap shot to the leg, or wrap shot to the body, or wrap shot to the head. Um, I'm still practicing those. If you want a better demonstration of those, um, look at some of Duke Tamiki's videos. He goes over the um, rap shots and a few of those. Um, check out the YouTube playlist because I have a few of those videos in that playlist. Um, last thing I want to talk about in this video is advice for sword and shield fighters to beat a great weapon. So we've just gone over how a great weapon fighter beats a sword and shield fighter. Now let's discuss the opposite. So number one, keep in mind all of the socks and techniques that we've already gone over in all the previous videos in this series, because that's what your great weapon opponent is going to be using against you. Um, especially watch out for the flat snap and the cow, because they're harder to block than you think. We talked earlier about sticking your weapon out in front. Um, I honestly don't think it's a good idea. Um, I think it's kind of a trap. Because I, I almost feel like it helps the great weapon opponent more than it helps you. But I'm also not certain of that. So if someone wants to, you know, show me better evidence that I'm wrong, then please do so. Because I am always hoping to learn new stuff. When you're facing great weapon opponent, don't charge in too quickly. Because that movement opens up your defense so you can be hit. Um, it also lets your opponent play uh, bullfighter. So imagine that my opponent is rushing towards me, then I can just use a pivot step to step off their line of movement and hit them in return. So to, so to reiterate, don't charge in too fast against your opponent. Conversely, don't advance too slowly, like, you know, hunker down and advance at a you know, snail's pace, because that gives your opponent, who has the reach advantage, too much time to pick apart your defense. Basically what you want to do is just advance at a walk. Almost almost like you're just, you know, sauntering in there. So, so you don't want to advance too slowly. You don't want to charge in really fast. You just want to advance and walk. Make sure that your defense is as solid as you can make it. Don't give your great weapon opponent a whole lot of time to pick you apart. As I stated in the... Um, one of the earlier videos in this series, um, fighting from your knees with a great weapon sucks, fighting with one arm with a great weapon sucks. So in other words, if you're a sword and shield fighter facing great weapon fighter, if you can take their arm or their leg, that will usually give you a comparatively larger advantage than if you took the arm or leg of a sword and shield opponent. So I talked in a previous video about how great weapon users should use um, angled movement to the 45 degree lines as opposed to lateral or straight forward and back movement. Um, if your great weapon opponent uses that angled movement against you, then 
you know, so if my opponent moves here, then turning to face them is slower and it's going to put me, you know, a quarter second behind in the fight or whatever. What you should try instead is using lateral movement to jam them up. So if my opponent's here and steps at an angle to there to try to hit me over here, then if I step this way, I'm going to jam them up. I'm going to be in a favorable position, they're going to be in an unfavorable position. Conversely, if they step this way and I step this direction, then that puts me out of their range so that I have more time to turn and face them. If, uh, if you ever lose sight of your great weapon opponent, like if they throw a pop thrust or something and you lift your shield to block it, you want to use that time where you're momentarily blinded to move because you don't want them to be able to move while you're blinded because then that puts you even farther behind in the fight. So in other words, if, if, uh, if my opponent throws a pop thrust, I lift my shield to block it. I don't know which direction he's moving. Oh, he or she. I don't know which direction they're moving, but I can be reasonably confident that they are going to move one direction or the other. So I just take a chance, either move this way, and if they move the same direction, then I've jammed them up. If they move the opposite direction, then I have time to face them, reassess the fight, you know, do your OODA loop, orient, uh, observe, orient, decide, act. Um, so yeah. Alright, that's all I've got for this video. Um, so I'm going to turn it off, and I hope to see you in the next video.